Long distance relationships, what you need to know about long distance relationships, the advantages and the disadvantages of these relationships. Hi everyone, I am Apollonia Ponti. I am your dating and relationship coach and I'm also the founder of ApolloniaPonti.com. I am your coach for you men to master your attraction skills, confidence, and life overall in your dating and relationship lives. Now, in today's video, we're going to talk about long distance relationships. And I know a lot of people have been requesting this video and for me to do something like this. So I want to get straight into it. The first thing that I want to mention are going to be the advantages. One of the advantages in a long distance relationship is that both of you have to connect in another way beyond a physical realm, right? So typically when we get into relationships sometimes and it's in the physical realm where we're like physical, we get to see them maybe once a week or um, they're close to us. Sometimes they can be in a matter of convenience and those relationships can be more convenient for us instead of really getting to know that person. So one of the advantages that you have in long distance relationships is that you do get to know someone because it comes through communication, which we'll talk about in the, some of, in this video as well. So you get to know someone because you have to communicate with this person. And the advantage of this is because you have, um, the advantage of getting to know the person instead of getting clouded by this hot and heavy physical realm that a lot of relationships start with. And then they figure out what this person is all about, maybe weeks or months later. So in this process, you get to see if you're probably right for another, if you guys have the same values in life, um, if this person really does, you know, are, is true to their word, if this person shows up to who they really want are and they inspire to be. And the next advantage in regards to long distance relationships is you get to focus on something besides what you're normally focusing on when it comes to relationships. Let me explain here. So if we lot, lost our sense of, sight, let's just say, right? If we lost our sense of sight, something else has to be heightened. Maybe it's our hearing or smell or all in, in intertwined and everything has to be heightened. Now I'm not saying in a long term relationships, are you losing your sight? But I'm saying it heightens our senses for something else. So long distance relationships also challenge us to heighten our senses into something else. So we can actually get to know the other person on the other side. So what is that? We might need to heighten our senses in the realm of communication. Maybe this is something that we haven't really experienced before, or we might need to heighten our senses of understanding our partner and what they need from us in this long distance relationship and what we might need from them in this long distance relationship and really focusing on things that we typically don't focus on when someone is in our day-to-day -day lives, right? So your senses get heightened in that error of a long distance relationship. And one thing too, is you get to know your partner, what they like, you know, and you get to heighten your senses in a way of, Oh, let me see if this person would like to have fun. Let me see if this person would like to play games on the phone. Let's see if we can make these things exciting. And it really heightens your senses to do more things and different things that are probably beyond, beyond your comfort zone, but the both of you can do it together. Another advantage is Communication. Communication is key because no one can force you to communicate. No one can force the woman on the other side to communicate. Or if you're a woman watching, there's no one that can force you for the man to communicate with you. Right? So that is the beauty of long distance relationships is you really get to see how someone is going to be really committed to this relationship. And I, that will actually go into my last um, advantage that I'm going to talk about here. But in regards to that in particular, that will go into my last advantage is what I'm saying. But in regards to communication, you get to really figure out if this person is involved in the relationship relationship as time consists. Now I'm not saying that things don't happen in life and communication will diminish a little bit and get little and little and little. But what I am saying is that if it continues to get a little less and a little less and a little less, and then it can, continues to be non-existent, there's really nothing going and going on in your partner's life. Or, um, maybe she, um, there was no arguments or anything like that, that has happened or disagreements, I should say. Then you can see that communication is something that she's probably not inspiring or aspiring to have in the relationship. So communication is key because of the fact that you can't force this on anybody. You can ask for them to be more communicative with you. You can ask them to communicate better with you, but if they choose not to do it, they also choose that they're not investing in the relationship with you. Now set aside that things do happen in life, right? Maybe she's going through a hard time. Maybe you're going through a hard time. Maybe you are, um, 
um, not being able to talk as much because work needs you a lot more and you know, life gets in the way sometimes and that's fine. But the thing about that is communication does not mean that you have to communicate every day. You just got to communicate your wants, needs, desires, problems, issues, and also say to your partner, Hey, the next couple of months I might be showing up differently because I am just head deep in work because X, Y, Z is happening right now, right? So that's what I mean about communication and that's what's so important. So we're not making the excuses and saying, oh, you know, this person is not communicating with me, but she's going through a hard time, but I haven't heard from her in a month. No, that's also showing that she's not invested as well in the relationship. Next advantage in regards to this is you establish a strong sense of interdependence in a long distance relationship. A lot of people ask me like, what is the most attractive thing when it comes to independence or interdependence and what keeps attraction in relationships? What, um, is the foundation of attraction sometimes, or what will always keep your partner invested in you or interested in you? And there's a couple things that go along with this answer, but one of the biggest things that always stands out to me is interdependence, right? When we don't become dependent on somebody else, our happiness should never be linked to anyone else besides us. So in long distance relationships, we have a really good understanding of interdependence because, and we should, now, where long distance relationships go wrong is when we don't have a good understanding of interdependence and we are just wanting to see our partners all the time, listen to our, call our partners all the time. We fear that our partners are, might be cheating on us when there's really no um, signs that they have showed us that they've cheated on us and we just focus on the lack and we get into the scarcity mindset because we don't feel good enough because our happiness also depends on them. And then also too, we interfere with our thoughts of just negativity. Our thoughts get interfered with negativity. And so we start to listen to those, right? That's not what I'm saying. That's dependent on the partner, right? And that comes down to a lack of confidence or abundance. But what I'm saying here is interdependence is so vital in long distance relationships. And this is actually an advantage. You can start still hang out with your friends. You can be involved in the community, do, you know, focus on your purpose, plan vacations together, travel together, whatever the case may be. That is really something that is vital to long distance relationships. And I think too, is something that you can learn moving forward with in any relationship is interdependence is so important. Lastly is an advantage in regards to long distance relationships. Now I'm not saying that in this scenario that you're going to know in the first week or the first day, right? But in long distance relationships, typically they happen because the both of you want it. It just doesn't occur. You know, it has to be talked about. Like, you know, when you're with someone physically and you can see them every week, it just starts to happen. You start to hang out a lot. You start to see each other every week. You start to do things together. Then you all of a sudden you introduce yourselves and it's my boyfriend or my girlfriend. And then it's, it's just there. Sometimes that happens, but with long distance relationships, something has to be established. The groundwork has to be met typically. And what I'm saying here is as time goes on, not in the beginning, but when time goes on, the both of you have to know the reason why you're in this long distance relationship. If you don't have an end goal in this long distance relationship, eventually as the months go on, you start falling in love and things are happening, then what is the purpose of being in this long distance relationship? I ask, right? Because we must understand that in this end goal, we both want to be with each other, right? So one of you guys has to like each other enough for one of you guys to move plain and simple. So who is working towards this goal? It can take years sometimes if someone's already established in a specific state, has a career, has homes, and then that one person knows that they're going to move for their person that they love, but it takes time. As long as you guys are both understanding that the other person is putting in the actions to make that move and there is an end result, then this is okay. When the problem arises is when there is no end result and we're kind of in a long distance relationship because of comfort to say that we have this girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever the case may be. And this brings me into disadvantages of a long distance relationship. The disadvantage is one of the disadvantages is loneliness and lack of physical companionship, right? A lot of us want to have that physical companionship with us. And it's really hard when we are lonely. And that's why interdependence is so important. And one of the advantages that I um, described in today's video, because if we don't have 
other things beyond this relationship, we will feel more lonelier in a long distance relationship because we're going at it for the wrong reasons. Another disadvantage is understanding that what is your weaknesses and what are your strengths, right? Because temptation is a huge disadvantage in relationships and long distance relationships, excuse me, is because if you don't see your partner, let's say for two months, and then all of a sudden you see this beautiful girl in front of you and she's hitting on you, it, it, temptation does creep in every once in a while. And let's be honest, we're all human, but here's the thing is we have to understand and have the willpower and trust in our other partner to be able to flourish like this, because there's no, nothing that you can do that will stop other people from hitting on your man, on your woman, on your woman. It only, it comes down to how you feel about yourself and you trusting your other partner not to go with that and not to lead that person on or, um, also give this person something of a, a part of them, meaning a phone number, a conversation, their heart, whatever the case may be. What's really important is we, we understand that temptation is out there. So we do the, pr- like the necessary things that we have to do to understand the reasons of why we're in this relationship. Because if we don't understand the reasons why we're in this relationship, then we will give into temptation and a long distance relationship. And I've seen a lot of my clients do this before and have been done to them. And last two advantages I want to mention is fights and arguments happen in long distance relationships, and they can be completely different than in-person relationships. The reason being is because of the fact that typically when we're in an argument with our partner or a disagreement, we can talk to them face to face. And it's really hard sometimes to not be able to talk to that person because all they have to do is pick up the phone. And that's the only thing they have to do. And they also too don't have to pick up that phone. So it's up to us to understand that if we get in a fight and argument, we don't want to go into reactionary mode where we're trying to push and push to get some type of a reaction from our partner or solve it right away. We have to understand that our partner might not, might not want to talk to us right now and need space. When we have a fight or argument, sometimes we want to fix it right away because we're already such at a distance that we feel more at a distance when a fight or an argument happens. But what's really understand what we have to understand here is we have to be very clear on the reason why we're arguing and then come from a place of groundedness where we're not so furious or angry or feel out of disproportion from our emotions because of the adrenaline that's kicking in. So we don't get into reactionary mode. We get into responsive mode. Responsive takes a little bit. We think it out and then we have a conversation. So that's important. And lastly too, is we can't think of long distance relationships and a lot of people do, which is understandable, but all relationships are like this. I tell you guys all the time, relationships are lessons. Relationships are big and bless- biggest lessons. Love and loss is our biggest lessons in life. And I think one of the biggest lessons in life, two of them biggest lessons in life, I should say. <laughs> um, but we always think like, if this doesn't work, I put so much time into this and I've invested so much into this. So it has to work. And typically when I see this happen, this is really important guys, because there's something I see so much is we try to make something work because of time. So we get lost in the idea of it's like a competition that you have with yourself because time was in your way. You've put so much effort into this, so you don't want your effort to go to waste. So we invest more time and more time and more time. And then we come to a conclusion that maybe this wasn't the right person for us. Maybe they end up cheating. Maybe they do something wrong to you because you've invested so much that you forgot about yourself, that you focused on, I got to invest more time. I got to show myself and prove to myself that this was the right investment for me. So that is a big disadvantage in long distance relationships. So at the end of this video, this is what I have to say to you in long distance relationships. For those of you that are in them, it is hard, but also there's great things that come out of it. I was in a long distance relationship myself for a little bit. My fiance lived in Europe for a while and we would travel back and forth. And what is the most important thing out of that whole situation that I can think back at now is the both of us had an end goal and we knew one or the other was willing to move. And that was what was so important. And that was the most important thing out of all of it. And I actually enjoyed it because I had my own sense of interdependence. And if you can enjoy the process, trust in the process, not come from insecurity in this process. And really, as you guys flourish into more of a relationship and you get to know each other as months and years go on, you guys have to have that end goal. 
And because you stayed in the end of this video, I have something for you. It's called the 20 question manual get to get to know a woman's true self. And this is really, really important. I think for long distance relationships. And these are questions that you can ask, not in a conversation all at once, but every once in a while, let's chime in with one of those questions that I give you. And cause that can really help you understand the woman that you're dating on the other end. As always, I love hearing from you. So comment below and I'll try my best to answer them. Press the like button if you enjoyed watching today's video and I'll see you again in the next one. Remember, you are always loved. Bye for now.